Hey guys, welcome to the Field of 68 YouTube channel. If you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more college basketball content just like this. But the place that we have to start, gentlemen, is down in Newark where UConn got their asses absolutely handed to them by Seton Hall, who came into the game at 7-4. The final score of that game was 75-60. to uh, The big news, Donovan Klingon sprained his ankle. Um, after the game, Dan Hurley told reporters that it was uh, a sprain. He doesn't know how long he's going to be out, but Klingon did walk out of the arena wearing a boot. Henson, we're going to you first on this one, man. UConn lost first game in the Big East on the road. Is this something that we need to be worried about? Is this just life on the road in the Big East? Make sense of this for me. Try to uh, cheer me up because this is the only thing that's cheering me up. <laughs> I'm not going to say who it was, but I was told to give you a hard time before you got on the date, but I'm, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you live. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's, it's tough. They, they're coming. I mean, I looked at their schedule, Texas at Kansas, UNC, Gonzaga. Like it, it was, it's a tough spot to be in for your first game. It gets a, a program that they just, for some reason, historically struggle with. That's kind of how we were when I played it with Georgia tech. Don't know what it was. Don't know what was in the water. We could never really beat them and if we did beat them it was always a tough game so no reason to overreact Seton Hall is relentless they 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 just they didn't stop they kept coming um Richmond 23 6 and 5 you know eight steals Klingen don't forget out. about those eight steals eight steals clinging going out of the game kind of affected them as well because that was kind of something that they were going to at the time uh who he was playing well so tough spot to be in but not Gonna overreact. UConn, they looked good. They they fought. It was just Seton Hall's night. And uh, like we said historically, they've struggled with this team for some reason. It, they, they, that's a team they always have a problem with. Yeah, McCall, I know you're gonna talk some sense into me, man. You're Mr. Positivity on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it was a sloppy game for UConn. They just didn't play well, right? I mean, 17 turnovers and didn't shoot the basketball well from behind the perimeter. I mean, give Shaheen Holloway and Seton Hall all the credit in the world. But UConn just didn't play well. It was a sloppy game for them, and that's what happens. And I would love to, to ask Henson this, too, just in terms of a player. But the conference game right before Christmas, I think that, that game right before Christmas as a coach was always a super challenge just in terms of keeping your team engaged. You know, the, the, the presents aren't going anywhere. Yes, you're going to leave, but you can't leave until the clock hits zero. And, you know, I just think that's throwing the conference game in there is a little bit of a challenge. But UConn just played sloppy. And, look, you know, you talk about Seton Hall having their number. And I, I, I make this reference a lot of times, you know, back to 06 and 07 when I was at the University of Florida, part of that staff. Like, we, we couldn't ever beat Bruce Pearl in Tennessee. We just couldn't do it, right? But we won back-to-back -back national championships. There's just some games and some teams – that just seem to have your number. That doesn't mean they're not going to make a Final Four. It doesn't mean they're not going to win a national championship. It doesn't mean they're still not one of the best teams in the country. They just didn't play well, didn't make shots, and turned it over 17 times. I mean, that's that's a recipe to, to lose a game, especially on the road. And now everyone talks about UConn, blue blood. Are they blue blood? Yeah, yes, of course they're a blue blood with what they've done. And I, I don't care, you know, what. how do you define that? But you go on a road. You're playing a conference game, and everybody raises their level of play in conference, right? Everybody raises it, and especially on the road, you're getting every single team's best shot. So you got to be prepared for that, and Seton Hall played harder in this game. I mean, Hurley alluded to it. He said the film session is not going to be fun tomorrow. He's going to hold every single person in that program accountable. Man, I'd love to be a fly on the wall in that film room tomorrow to watch that, but – they played harder. Seton Hall played harder. And when the, you play harder, you play more connected, you win. And and UConn was just sloppy. I mean, you can't turn it over 17 times in a conference game on the road and not make threes. Oh, and by the way, lose your starting center to an ankle injury, who's your rim protector? Because it's not like Seton Hall was banging home threes. They're getting downhill. And if Donovan Klingman's back there, he's altering a bunch of those shots. He was out of that game. Seton Hall took complete advantage of it and give them credit, give Shaheen Holloway credit. Great win for them. Go ahead, Hudson. Oh, just some – it was also some unlucky bounces, especially in the second half when they were trying to get back in the game. Just some unfortunate rolls and offensive boards. Now, credit to Seton Hall. They were getting 
to those 50-50 balls. But just one of those nights, it, it happens. Coach McCall, you actually brought up a good you up, you probably brought up a good you brought up a good point as well. Looking into Christmas break, I never thought about it like that, but it is something that you are looking forward to being home, taking a break, being with family and friends. You know, when I was in school, Coach Williams was big on that. So definitely something uh that could have played a factor. Yeah. Um for the people tracking alongside here, Creighton and Villanova are headed to overtime. Uh, some weird referee reviewing stuff at the monitor uh, there. I, I have it on mute, so I don't know exactly what was happening over there. But if you just see less than five seconds left in the game, odds are pretty good in a college basketball game. They're going to be referees looking at a monitor. Um, I think that you guys are both right. Uh, Alex Karaman, <laughs> after the game, said, this is a quote, uh, if you don't show up ready to play in the Big East, you're going to get your ass kicked. And, and to me, that is exactly what happened uh in, in this matchup i think that it was something where you kind of overlooked uh seton hall right you're coming off of a game against gonzaga you have everybody talking about how you might be the best team in the country jim Beheim is on this show saying that uconn is the best team in college basketball and uh they just did not show up ready to play um i got a little bit of uh of, of coping mechanisms for myself so i'm going to put you guys through this for a second okay mm -hmm. UConn has as many national championships in the last 20 years as they do conference opening victories. They are four and 16 in their last 20 conference openers. The last uh, prior to last season, the last three times that they reached the final four and the last two times that they won the national title, they lost their season opener only four times since their last national title. Did they win the uh, have a conference opener? victory so it's just one of those things that happens um we saw marquette get smacked at providence um uh, people probably regard providence a little bit higher than they do seton hall at this point uh we're watching creighton right now struggle with the villanova team that lost uh three games to big five competition it's just it happens man it happens sometimes and and if you can kind of take this as a wake-up call if you are uh if you are uconn then i think that that's probably the best way um to view this i'll have much more in-depth and longer rants if you want to listen to the top dogs podcast over on the field of 68 that's my uconn podcast so uh, if you want to listen to that and, and hear me rant for 30 minutes about uh what the hell is going on with this this program this team then that's something it's also very and, and and you and goodman give me crap for this all the time it's hard to win it's hard to win. <laughs> it is. It's man. hard to win. Winning is hard. And you're getting every single team's best shot every single night. They're not trying to defend the national championship. They're not defending anything. No one's taking that banner down. But they're still UConn. They got UConn across the front of their chest. They're one of the most successful programs in the history of college basketball. It's hard to win. They're going to have off nights. Like, like the podcasters and – you know, the media and the NBA, nobody ever reacts, you know, like they lose one That's game. Of, of the best team in the NBA loses one game. Nobody ever overreacts. Basketball is different, right? And football, the bigger, faster, stronger team with a really good quarterback, generally nine and a half times uh, out of ten wins. In basketball, it's different. You can have an off night. You can miss shots. You could turn it over, or the other team could get hot behind a three-point line. Ask Purdue. Right? They've struggled in the NCAA tournament because of that. No need to overreact. They're still one of the best teams in the country. But, listen, it's hard to win. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, look, overreacting is what we do on this. Thank you for watching The Field of 68. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, hit that like button, share this link with your friends, or check out the description for some other places that you can consume Field of 68 content.